Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, we are looking at Tua's last couple games. Now, yes, different system. Same dude, though. Same Tua. So excited to see exactly what he looked like at the end of the year, what potentially he's looking forward to improving on moving forward. Fired up for this one. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. All right, how did Tua look at the end of 2021? A little RPO, shocker. Rip the glance down here to the bottom, one back power. Now, I get it, it's a different system, but they're obviously gonna ask him to do some of this stuff. And I think, obviously, he does it really well as well. It's just going to be about incorporating the other elements of kind of a comprehensive NFL offense and being able to find things that he can do throwing the ball beyond just this. So what is just this? First of all, uh, we just saw a shift in motion, y'all. You're welcome. Did you go to school on that shift in motion? Hopefully you did after watching the video earlier in the week. So what do we got here? We got power, we're wrapping, gap down everybody. We've got up top, we've got what I'm gonna call a variation of stick, horizontal stretch, glance, vertical stretch. You're welcome. And yeah, this is a really nice RPO now. Homeboy can RPO for sure. Right here, he's got this tight end man-to-man. -man. He inserts into the run. Technically, there's no one to block him. We got to throw it. Middle field closed. We're right there. Love it. Also, check the leverage out because of the shift and the motion. So again, I'll, re I'll rewind it here so you can watch what happens with the leverage here. But middle field closed. Tight, nasty split. You're probably going to get outside leverage regardless. So nice, easy lane. Again, that's the easiest throw in the world for a left-handed quarterback. But obviously, his strength, what he's shown he can do consistently, this RPO game, there it is. One more time, watch the leverage down here to the bottom of the screen. Kind of head up right there. We go with the motion, get even more outside down here to the bottom. Easy. Really nice premium accuracy right here and again now you know is that always going to be a tight end get in there big body somebody also got some perimeter speed as well love this again just rpo wise here nobody to block 32 that double team with the left guard left tackle is going to eight watch the left guard's eyes right there boom it's outstanding we'd love to get a little bit more horizontal movement but those guys get paid to not get moved Got nobody to block 32, throw it right over his ear. Big time play. And again, no shocker here, newsflash, that Tua can operate in the RPO system. It's just about growing what they're asking them to do. Now, this is about, in my opinion, as tough as it gets as far as footwork-wise, where you're going to essentially, we're running counter to the right, our left here, ripping a one-step, what I'm going to call dart, one-step slant. Now, worth going to school here on this play because we're going to see this again later in this video. But again, we're getting some iteration of stick up top. So first of all, where's the ball go? Right down here. So one step, go. Okay, taking advantage of that space. Got all this off coverage. They're going to try to close the middle of the field. That's a lot of space. Now, who's this going to be this year? They're going to do any sort of things like this. If this is a dude who's got some significant wheels giddy up, this is an opportunity for a great play. Now, why is this so hard quarterback-wise? Well, first of all, they're running counter. Okay, we're on the right side. We're gap down backer. We're kicking. We're wrapping with the nub. Not the nub. The sniffer. Okay? But they're also running, it looks like, same side counter ball handling. So normally you would want the counter to be over here and then counter back, right? It's called counter. This side, they're running same side ball handling. So he's going to flip his, he's going to have his right foot back, his left foot forward. Now, normally for a right-handed quarterback, that would be easier to make this throw. But because he's left-footed or left-handed, excuse me, he's got to extend the ball here and then flip all the way around to get this throw out. So again, not only are you getting a horizontal stretch with the stick up top, but you've got that type of footwork. Y'all, that's as good as it will ever get RPO footwork-wise there. It, it cannot be better than this. One more time, just kind of the, the twitch of it. Now, he's obviously a fast, strong dude when he's healthy. Boom, boom, rip, and that's right on him. That ball catches him. 
can appreciate the footwork from the backside here even better. <laughs> that's so hard to do. I'm telling you, that's like a blind one-step dart now. He certainly has some space there NFL-wise, but wow. Next one here, another RPO. Touchdown to the bottom of the screen. On what I'm going to call post-wheel sneak. Again, running one back power. Again, check that wheel out from the motion. So a little slant. Wheel sneak. For the longest time, I associate that play with the Chiefs. A little, little waddle there. There you go. Again, shift. Motion. You're welcome. Tough to handle. And then that sneak is just that tight end sniffer in the backfield coming across on the flat. There's that one back power action. Whoop. Now who knows what tells him to pull it there. I'm not sure I know. But I love it. I think that was a third and short too. You can just watch the action of it. So shift, motion. No, Anybody go with the motion? Or did they just bump it over? Bump it over. All right. So maybe it's a man's own. What do I? Who knows how they're reading this thing? But this slant or glance, we'll call that a wheel. And then here's that sneak. Pretty sweet. And then we're just running one back power over here, coming downhill. Great job, Tua operating the RPO system. He can certainly do it. The other thing, nuance here, for all you RPO haters. Watch the double team on the right side of the offensive line. I think it is the right tackle. So he should be doubling to eight. So that right tackle, theoretically, all these guys, well, depending on how they want to block it, yeah, that's not, these guys are all gap down. So when there's no one in that gap down, you get an opportunity, horizontal double team, eject this cat this way, and then climb to eight. Well, what I what we just say it was, RPO. So we don't want to be climbing for no reason. So this guy, for the savvy offensive lineman, he's going to come to this run, right? Like he's got to fit this thing. If he doesn't, if he runs out of there, you don't want to get in the habit here in the RPO world of double teaming and then chasing guys down the field. That's amateur hour. Yeah, these guys get paid, come in here. He stays right here. He's got to, it's got to come to him. If he doesn't come to him, he just hangs right here. And where is he? Right at the line of scrimmage. No issue with illegal guys downfield. So watch that right tackle. Boom. And then he just stays right there. You can see him eyeballing eight. Boom. Love to get into his ribs even more right there. Dig him out. But that's nice movement. Look at that horizontal movement. Boom. Stay on that double team. Nice catch. Excellent. Next one here. All right. Here's when it starts getting a little sloppy for me. Third and three. We've got down here at the bottom, in, in, and a little reverse whip. Now, I love the anticipation here, but really, that should be a pick. You know what I'm going to say. If you could catch, you'd be playing offense. But this is, to me, where Tua has to get better. Now, could the pass pro be better? Could it be easier to, you know, a little bit of a cleaner pocket? Sure. It could maybe, you know, a little grabby down here to the bottom. Okay. For me, what I love, and I, and I do really love it because not everybody has it, there's some anticipation here. Now, that's not what the route looks like. The route is not the greatest, but the throw is worst. He kind of bananas that thing in there for me. Maybe, you know, you, you know you're always going to get physical guys on the back end with the Patriots here. Then we get another in here. Maybe not that deep. And then that reverse whip or arrow here, like return route. So for me here, I would love to see either a better throw on target here or just come down if this you know to me might not be open you know everybody's got a different definition of open on Sundays but I like letting it rip there but it's third and three you got Waddle coming back there right on the first down marker now could he get there hard to say with the you know what's going on at left tackle here but that's some great anticipation he lets it go right there the wide receivers right on the 50 Get into that. Now, does he grab him a little bit at the top? And is that why it's off? Nah. Feels like I'm making excuses. 
I'd rather see him just come down and get the first down here with Waddle on, a, on an easier throw. Now you should think you should have the in, but you still have to win. So again, pass pro, got to get better. You know, is this decision making? You know, I think you can make the argument that you could bring it down. But again, he's got to get that thing out of his hand. He's getting hit. Three and a hitch, getting hit. So we, we need to be better up front. We need to be better with the accuracy. I love the anticipation. But this is the first of what will become many kind of issues, misses. Something's not quite there. Another RPO, little split flow inside zone, double glance. To me, this is a miss and a drop. It's more droppy than missy. You're welcome for that. But it could be a better throw. But th this has got a chance to score. Now, the cheetah's going to take that thing to the house with a good ball. Waddle should take that thing to the house. This is a gift. Now, does it get tipped? You know, maybe, again, excuses from me. But, man, let's, let's just say it gets tipped. Because, man, he, he makes that throw in his sleep, usually, in the RPO world. So what's going on here? Split flow inside zone, one of my favorite runs, paired with double glance. We're going to call it double glance, bang eight, whatever you want to say here. We're going to get, I think they were going into the flat here, and then in the run game wise, here's that split flow action, and we're coming downhill from the back. Now this is almost like a premium, premium look, because I think this guy's supposed to be in the middle of the field, and he almost like inserts into the run. So I mean, this thing is made to order. And you get a little bit of a burst release here. So what is that? That's that outside release. So he doesn't run. You don't get that route running right at him. So he's already outside leverage, right? Right here. So you run at him, at that outside leverage. What does it do? It just widens this window. This window goes from that to what could be like this window to now you get this extra space in here. So I love everything about this except the execution at the tail end. Yeah, and he should catch it. This is kind of the well-designed RPO for me, footwork-wise, quarterback-wise. See how his feet are lined up to throw that glance already? And maybe he's a little wide, you know? I'm watching that Drew Brees film, but... Ugh, comes off like a little bit of like a circle change, too. It like dies on him. Hopefully it got tipped. Watch the split flow action. A nice run too if he just hands it off oh close to being a touchdown and it can be that close next one here another tough one you know immediately when you watch it the first time it looks like a bad miss and i think it is a miss i also probably think it's not the greatest read in the world so this is right at the start of a two minute situation no it's a bad miss okay so let's acknowledge what it is Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. Easy, quick, simple, free way to support the channel. It means a lot to me. Please subscribe. In addition, we are relaunching the Quarterback School Patreon community, revamping a lot of different things over there, really trying to streamline the payment process. It's making it definitely cheaper now. So get over there, support the channel, kind of get a window into what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So really deep dive content over there. Get over there, elevate your game. I appreciate it. And then finally, if you're looking to take your football to the next level, check out a bunch of the quarterback school courses. All of those things can be found with links in the video description to this video. Get over there, check it out. I appreciate it. As for this one, let's keep it going. So about this concept, a lot of people would call this an iteration of dagger. Actually, a lot of people. I would. Some people, I think, call it hooters. Doesn't really matter. It's a high-low with a in, a clear, and some sort of grab pull route down here. Now, where this throw is, it's behind him. Now, are they on the same page? You know, is he supposed to turn out of this thing? Again, I'm speaking excuses. In addition, yes, it's a miss. The ball should go here, right? I mean, anytime you have this clear, you know, are we trying to throw the check down or are we trying to get the ball down the field? I mean, to me, the same timing, same throw, this is open, 
we're running. We've gotten a chance for a decent chunk. So, I mean, you be the judge here, but too many, too many bad things here. You can see that in coming open, right? With the same time, if the ball just goes on the same line, I mean, maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's so low it's to the end. It's not, but you can see if the ball just was higher on that same path, it's a beautiful throw to the end. Damn. So, lots of bummers all layered up into we have to be more consistent in the drop back game from within the pocket. There are just too many misses like this. And so why? Let's watch the footwork. When he hits that back foot, you should be lined up to throw the in or the out. And that foot, it looks like it's perpendicular to the goal line. Right? If anything, it almost looks like he's somehow, like it's sort of going this way. Certainly not lined up, you know, like you're going to rip this in. To me, you'd want that thing, you'd want to almost dovetail a tick over here so that when you hitch, small reset, so that's your last step, and then you hitch up, you're in the center of the pocket. That's why you do those little dovetails. But get this, at worst, if you're going to drift, get this thing lined up to where you want to throw it. And if you want to throw it to the tight end for some reason, get lined up. So the footwork at the top of this thing, that's an easy fix. Not an easy fix. It's fixable. See how he has to hitch and then he gets over there. But he never really gets over there. He's on his toes. You know, he's like ripping that thing. But man, just get over there. Make it easy. This is not a hard throw. Throwing an out to the number three? Oh, really fortunate. Just not good enough. Next one here. Nice scramble. Third down, fourth quarter. You know, a few different things here. For me, first off, it's a nice scramble. When he's healthy, can move a little bit, get a chance for a green dog on a big third down. I love the chance, love the fact that they protect it up. Love a little flavor there at the end. Enjoy it, celebrate it. Watch 53 here on our right. He's going to green dog. He's got that tight end. He's got the tight end there. He blocks. He goes. No one blocking him. So nice job pass pro wise here. Good enough. Get out there and make a little move. Love it. Use your athleticism. Get some first downs. Now, let's acknowledge also what maybe some other teams are doing. So when we're taking shots here. So we're going to be an empty bunch. And we're going to do this little return motion. Waddle, burner. We're going to block here. Seven person protection. Both these guys are staying in to block. So we're taking a shot here. It's third and medium to long. Waddle here, he's running a crosser. Now this crosser is not there early. But when you get this type of man coverage, so these guys both have these two tight ends here. When he kind of, I think he ends up kind of like check crossing. So he's going to go with them. So there's nobody over here. Nobody over here. Drop in here. So when you set up to scramble, so you hit that back step. Who knows what the read is here. It's not there. He climbs up in the pocket. He gets out of there. Now, here's the decision. So are you getting out of there to run? Or are you getting out of there knowing you've got burners on crossers? And if you've got burners on crossers, the league has shown anything the last few years. It's that this speed can exploit jam near any coverage across the field. So yeah, am I being crazy picky? Yeah. But do they have burners and do we need to find a way to take advantage of that speed on the perimeter? Yes. So up, right there, he beats the green dog. Get your eyes back down the field. Now, it might be so wide open that you just take off here. I get that too. But Waddle throws up the mailbox right there at the 40. So I like the decision to just go get it yourself because it's third down, but it's worth paying attention to here. We have to have the ability to drop back to play action and rip it down the field on plays that aren't RPOs. And we eventually have to get to the fact that we have to be able to do that outside the numbers as well. But I think it's just worth pointing out right there. Get your eyes back. And his eyes are, he sees it, but he's, he's running already, right? Like he's got that thing tucked. As opposed to just, uh, 
you know, and it works out here and it's third down and I acknowledge it's good enough. It's fine. But what this offense eventually becomes, I think will depend on how they take advantage of the speed on the perimeter. Now, this is a four minute offense situation. First play, same play we saw earlier where we ripped the dart. This time we throw the little flat at the stick, the horizontal stretch again, off counter action. Watch that sniffer and guard their right guard, our left side go get two outside the C gap and just a really nice job. Great job staying in bounds as well. So again, I told you to pay attention to that play earlier. Here it is. It's the exact same play. Y'all it's the NFL. They run the same plays. This is where it went the last time we talked about the crazy footwork. Now they ran it the opposite way. This is where the ball goes this time to the flat. They're running counter G Y counter kick wrap. Everybody else has gapped down. Come out here with, I think they run like a little stick or rub route here. And it's a thing of beauty. Again, last time they ripped the dart, it was middle field closed. This time we've got split field coverage here pre-snap. And they come out here and work the little stick flat. So nice call. Again, this is bread and butter for Tua. Stealing. Especially to the left. Really nice, accurate throw. Let your guy run. Again. These are tight ends here. They've got speed on the perimeter now. How are they going to interweave this RPO strength of his with what they have personnel-wise? Now, third and eight. Massive play here. Close this thing out. Good brackets coverage. Everything locked up. When you get brackets, though, you know oftentimes, unless there's a spy, there's nobody on the quarterback. So people are going to be running with routes, matching with routes, man match coverage, matching up with crossing routes, running out of there, and there's nobody for the quarterback. Big time. Again, another huge third down conversion. Love it. So again, watch this coverage on the back end here. There's nowhere to go with the ball. This is good coverage. We've got two over three down here to the bottom. They're in and out on the slot. We've got four over three up top. 53 is running with the back. Everybody's running with their route, passing things off. Everybody but the quarterback. Really nice job. And again, I think we'll see more and more of this as he gets more and more comfortable, more and more healthy. But really nice job here. Again, he does a nice job here. Look, this time he gets out of the pocket, gets back up to throw. Not looking to just run. No, good decision. Get vertical. Make somebody miss. Big time play. So, this is the second to the last game now. If that was the last game, second to the last game. This is the first play. We're going to rip a little glance down here to the bottom. Now, at first glance, you're welcome for that, pun intended. This looks like a really nice throw. And I think you can make the argument that it is, accuracy-wise. What I'm going to be looking for is just more precision in this type of play action down the field rip game so again appreciate the accuracy that thing's on the money right catch tackle okay so now why is it catch and tackle because that's a beautiful throw and this is what he does in my opinion when you get in this world where you are going to what we're going to call here is a play action so he's going to play fake here then he's going to take three, and then we're going to hitch. Okay, so in my opinion, this is usually an added step. So this becomes really four and a hitch. We're running what I'm going to call a glance or a bang eight. Normally, with this type, to me in most offenses, this is three, no hitch. Just three and let it rip. Or shuffle hitch. So the timing is three no hitch though. Watch the timing here if it was three no hitch. And this is what I'm talking about as far as just precision in the play action drop back game. So there's the fake, right? So timing, slow. One, two, three, sort of. It's like a one and a half. And then he hitches again. And he gets a little heel clicky there as well. But it's more the timing we're talking about here. So play fake, three step drop, hitch, throw. As opposed to if he went one, two, three, throw right there. 
Now, that is an anticipation throw. So he's we know he can anticipate a throw. Look at this coverage now. Who knows what coverage they're in here. We're rolled over. Looks like they're playing a half field over here. The perfect call dialed up. The perfect call. Hit this thing out of the break and get this thing to the house. As opposed to play fake, three, hitch. Now it's still a good throw, but you allow this guy to come off and make this tackle. To close the gap. To close the yardage. So again, how detailed are you going to be in this kind of timing world? And again, is that the greatest route in the world down here at the bottom? Hell no. We're drifting out of there. We've got the turn signal on to the right. Slow. Okay, we're catching that thing at the hash almost. Now maybe he's like, it's like a backside read. I don't, I don't think it is. But man, it's got a chance for a massive play. And it's a big play. It's a chunk. But even in these types of chunk big plays, you can see this room and space to get more detailed, more precise in what they're doing. Because that's a beautiful ball. Well, my goodness. First quarter, first drive. The wheels are coming off now. We got a sack here. So a number of different things here for this sack. I think originally I would just like to see him be quicker in playing the play. Whether you want to call it processing, playing the play, however you want to determine it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know exactly what they're reading on this play. I can tell you that by his footwork right here and his eyes and his helmet, watch the helmet stride, it looks like he's taking his drop and working our right. Right? Now it looks like he's working to our right. We'll talk about what that looks like when we get back to the wide. But when it's not there right here, he needs to be able to, boom, either get to the backside or find the check down. So I like this part of it. No, okay, you don't like it, great. Come to the backside, no. You start pedaling out of there, right there, find the check down. And look, I mean, the check down is right there, the back, 28. The back is clapping, y'all, clap. You can hear this, clap, 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 clap. Get it to the back. Check it down. It's third and long. No, no, pedal, check. Got to get better. And I think it will, It's it must get better. So down here at the bottom of the screen. Now I could see why he would want to turn this thing down. They're going to get some iteration of cloud. So you essentially have to rip a whole shot here. Whether this is an out, an option, whatever this is. You got a must outside release down here to the bottom. You have to be real willing if you're going to throw it, and he doesn't throw it, to rip this whole shot. Now, this is the part where you will see guys that I think are playing the position at a really high level rip this. Because this is it's not going to get easier. To the boundary, anticipate it, see it. Now, you know, he's like looking off. It looked like he was like trying to hold his eyes down the middle of the field. I don't think you necessarily always have to do that. I know people are drilled to do that at a young age. But right here, split field coverage. Let's get our eyes to the first read. See this corner, see this corner, settle and anticipate this thing when you have split field coverage. Now, if you don't like it, don't throw it. But if you don't like it and don't throw it, no to the whole shot, backside, check down. That fast. And so you can just see here, and I'm not saying this is easy. It's not easy. Okay, don't get it twisted. Right there, rip the whole shot. He's already off of it. All right. Come backside, no. Check down, right there. Like he's trying to hold that thing to the middle of the field. Never going to get there. Now, maybe that guy should get to the middle of the field better with like a crosser, and it would be a big play. But that middle, that linebacker type up top standing right in the middle of the tee does a nice job making that guy run the hump. Never going to get there. Late. Got to be able to find a check down there. You you check that thing down, it's got a shot at a first down. Maybe. Collision for a first down makes somebody miss. So tough. We're taking unnecessary sacks, in my opinion. We're missing opportunities to drive the ball down the field. No, no, check. Uh, just late. All right. So next one here. Late on a corner. Now, again, is this a miss, a drop? We're going to naked to his right up top. And this thing, you know. Could he catch it? Yeah. Could he time up his jump better? Yeah. Again, sounds like excuses as I say it. I think this is a throw he's got to make. I think he comes off again, a little change up E. You know, he's such a 
like a muscler when he throws it. He's just like trying to muscle it out there as opposed to, you know, staying, you know, he's never been the most fluid guy in the world, but that's a corner throw, you know, that you probably want to either put on the sideline or put right on him. So what I mean by that is when this corner kind of tries to tweener you, so you've got this flat here, and I've got this corner. You've got a couple options here if you're going to make this throw. You can either throw it out here with some touch, or you can rip it right on him. What you don't want to do is what this ball is, is kind of tweener it high and allow him to get kind of sandwiched. And I think, you know, not every throw is going to be perfect, but, I mean, we've looked at essentially two and a quarter, two and an eighth of a game, and we've seen too many of these. And he could catch it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that fact. But it's a worse throw than it is a drop. He gets up. He tries to get up right there. Just put it, either put it on the sideline or put it out there. Put it right on him. The tweener, and again, the, I guess the, the miles per hour on the throw, just not what you want to see here. And again, is it the easiest throw? No. Going to your right as a lefty, flip your hips around. I think he could be a little bit more sudden, flipping his hips around, giving himself a chance. But man, that thing comes out a little funky. A little soft. Ooh, hanging slider. Last one here, third and nine. This is where essentially I had to stop the video. I was going to watch any more of this. He one hops this thing, coming out on a scramble down here to the bottom. You know, there's nothing there. We take a huge L at right guard or left guard. That stinks. But this is a throw you have to make. Now, maybe it's a monsoon. I didn't check the weather in this game. It doesn't look like it's that bad. You know, that, that bounces a yard, a couple yards in front of him. That's a throw you would expect someone to make at the, at a much, much lower level of football. And this is a throw he's got to make. Go into his throwing side. Again, check out the left guard. Okay, overset. Whoop, feet inside, can't happen. It's a bummer. But right here, I mean, look how open. I mean, he's got his head down. Damn. It just can't, it won't, won't happen for very long. I'll tell y'all. Uh, I'm a fan. I've been a fan. I think he can do it. I think that for whatever reason, the consistency about being able to do it, it's got to be better. It has to get better. Because this is just, these are plays that, that every quarterback in the league should make. Starter, backup. I'm not saying I never missed a throw. I'm not saying, certainly comparing myself to this cat. But these are throws that guys in the league expect to make all the time. 10 out of 10. And and I guess the other part about it is if you're going to miss it, to miss it better than that. <laughs> like the badness of this miss, the grounder. So that is a wrap. Two up. I'm still a fan. Been a fan. I still think that he's got a chance to be a really good NFL quarterback. Now, has he certainly been limited up until this point? Yes, let's acknowledge what it is. We've got to find a way to take what he does well in the RPO world and layer it into different parts of the passing game, the drop back, the play action, the movement. Now, certainly health is an issue, but what they've got on the perimeter speed-wise, what they have in a new system, what that looks like, I'm fascinated to see. I think it's going to be fun to be able to see exactly what it looks like but I'm really excited to see the growth that Tua needs to show, specifically with the consistency in the drop back play action, driving the ball down the field, decision making, timing, not taking so many hits, what they look like up front. All those types of things go together into the output of what this offense and really what Tua will be moving forward. So excited to see what that looks like. Let me know what you think of the video. I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. Have a good one. Later.